Let's turn our Bibles now to James chapter 3. We're going to pick up from verse 13 because uh, we, uh, we stopped there with verse 12. So James chapter 3. Now, after having spoken to us about the importance of our words and uh, our tongue, he tells us, you know, this is what true wisdom is. This is how you and I can say that we are walking with wisdom. So here he is contrasting wisdom that comes from God and wisdom that is earthly, sensual, and demonic. That is, that is, it's from a different source. Wisdom, true wisdom from God, heavenly wisdom. One of his characteristics is meekness, walking in humility. You're positioning yourself to conquer when you're walking in humility, when you're walking in meekness. So the Bible, so James is saying here, if a person is really wise and understanding, he's going to do his work, meekness of wisdom. We see here in verses uh, James 3 and verse 14 uh, through 16, he says, look, if you are being motivated by bitter envy and selfish ambition, don't boast and don't lie against the truth, meaning just own up. So guard your heart from jealousy. Let there not be an ounce of jealousy in you and in me. Amen? Eight characteristics or eight traits or eight expressions of divine wisdom. This is what you could say the litmus test. You can check to know whether you're walking in God's wisdom or not. How do, we do? How do you know? Because he says, verse 17, But the wisdom that is from above, so we prayed for wisdom, God has given, let's see now, how, whether you're walking in it or not, the wisdom from above, verse 17, is what? First, pure. The God in his wisdom is not going to show you and me how to rob the bank. That is not pure, honest, no integrity. The wisdom that comes from above is first pure, or you could use the word integrity or honest or you know, any synonyms uh, to the word pure, holy. So that's the first trait. Second, he says, it's peaceable. Third test, he says, is it's gentle. Number four, it's willing to yield. Number five, it's full of mercy. Number six, Good fruits. The outcomes are good. Number seven, without partiality. And lastly, number eight, it's without hypocrisy, meaning it's sincere. So now we go to chapter four. We're going to pick up chapter four. Uh, we look at the first five verses. Now, he's continuing from chapter three. So James didn't write, you know, break it down in chapter and verse. He was actually writing a complete letter. So he has shown us what causes all this strife, confusion, and every evil work. And then he says, okay, there's one more thing we must be aware of. He says, where do wars and fights come from among you? So can you imagine, this is among believers, and there are wars and fights. So he says, believers, if you've got all this war and fighting, uh, strife and confusion, and all these things going on, where does it come from? He says, you know, the root cause is, in verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1, they come from your desire for pleasure or wrong desire, evil desire. Now he's telling us another effect of wrong desire. So wrong desire not only puts us into temptation, wrong desire also puts us at war with one another. You lust and you do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain. Why? Because... You do not ask. Instead of asking God, you're fighting with each other. But then when you go to ask God, verse 3, he says, you ask and still don't receive because you're asking motivated out of these evil desire. So even our asking is, more, is coming out of this wrong desire. So God is not obligated to give that to us. Then he says, verse 4, he says, you're adulterers and adulteresses. Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. 
James 4 verse 5. Now, we don't exactly, it's not a singular verse that he's quoting, but he's, re- he's referencing the essence of what we see in the Old Testament, that God says, I am a jealous God, and you are my peculiar people. So he's pro- most probably connecting the two and saying, you know, God who dwells in you, he's jealous of you. God is jealous for you. He wants you for himself. That's why he doesn't want us to be friends with the world. He wants us to be friends with God.